Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Norman Mineta. Jason, thank you very much. Well, Jason, uh, thank you very, very much for the great honor that's been uh, tendered to Bill and me. And I want to thank the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation and Jason for this wonderful award and for ho hosting this week uh, the Capitol Hill Ocean Week. I love that acronym, CHOW, Capitol Hill Ocean Week. If I could digress for just a minute, the film talked about my being mayor of San Jose, California, and I uh, appointed a young man to the Youth Commission. He was 14 years old at that time, but he's now working here in Washington, D.C., and I'd like to introduce Dr. James Delgado. Jimmy. Wonderful to see where <clears throat> Dr. Delgado is now, uh, given uh, what he was doing when he was 14. <laughs> well, I am truly honored to be receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award and to be sharing this recognition with my very good friend and uh, co-chair of Josie, Bill Ruckelshaus. I'd also like to thank Bill Riley and Alan Simpson for that wonderful message through a videotape that we just saw. Now, as I think you all know, the Joint Ocean Commission Initiative is a bipartisan effort dedicated to helping the United States and its leaders to focus on ocean policy and uh, ensure that our oceans and coasts are well managed and are healthy and productive. One of the key words there is bipartisan, for they not only transcend uh, state and international boundaries, but they also transcend political party lines. As a matter of fact, over the past decade, because of the leadership from both sides of the Congress and from Democratic and Republican administrations alike, many important steps have been taken to address critical ocean issues. Even in the time that Bill Ruckelshaus and I have worked together as co-chairs of the joint initiative, we have met with and talked with so many leaders to move the United States toward a better coordinated national ocean policy. And we have seen some great advances as a result of leadership, particularly in coastal states and regions. And we have witnessed an overall shift in the way we think about our oceans, understand how they function, and how we approach in the management of those resources. Now, one of the most impressive things I've seen in recent years is the greater level of cooperation and collaboration that is leading to real change. And I believe that there is an increasing recognition that we're all in this together. No single, <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> no single agency or government, no matter at what level or what power they have uh, been granted by statute or guaranteed by treaty, and effectively manage our oceans alone. It takes everyone working together, leveraging resources and developing innovative solutions to create the type 
of change that is needed to improve and sustain the health, health of our resources. But while good progress has been made, we need to continue to do more to address the tremendous challenges that our oceans face. You are all experts in this room, and you know as well as I that we have a lot of serious issues to address, including overfishing, bycatch, ocean pollution, and in particular, plastics in the ocean, loss of coastal habitat, loss of biodiversity, invasive species, and problems that will result from increasing activity as the ocean becomes a busier place. But perhaps the greatest challenge facing our oceans today and the issue of our time is related to the impacts of the rising level of carbon to the atmosphere. Now this is driving many changes in our oceans, which serve as a large sink for the excess carbon. And as a result, we are seeing increasing acidity of our oceans, which is a cause of great concern because of the impact that it's having on the ecological health of the ocean and that of marine life, as well as the communities and economies that depend on them. Other threats include climate change, which is causing rising sea levels and warning, warming ocean temperatures, and more frequent and intense storms are putting people and property at risk. And keep in mind that it is estimated by the year 2025 that 75% of the American people will be living in coastal counties. So we need to continue to work across state boundaries, party lines, and international boundaries to address the threat to our valuable ocean resources. The oceans are our lifeblood. They give us food, they regulate our wealth and climate systems, they are vital to our economy and to our national security. They offer, offer us a place to play, relax, and they also provide spiritual nourishment. We owe our oceans a great debt, and we have a responsibility to our children and to our grandchildren to ensure that the oceans will stay healthy and vibrant. Bill Ruckelshaus and I, along with our fellow members of the Joint Initiative Leadership Council, look forward to continuing to work with all of you to ensure that our oceans are healthy and productive now and into the future. This is important work. So again, Bill and I want to thank Jason, the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation, and all of you for this great recognition that we accept on behalf of the Leadership Council. Thank you very, very much.